The second beatitude. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So mourning. What does mourning mean? Right, mourning is the loss of something dear to you. Right, we can think of it specifically in terms of mourning the death of a loved one, which surely is the most potent form of mourning. But also, we can mourn those things which may be something like seasons of life. Right? If you leave a place of employment, there can be mourning involved with that. If you lose a friendship, a uh, divorce could cause mourning of the relationship. Um, even silly things like... Uh, like having to get rid of a car or something that you've had for a long time it can involve a little bit of mourning, right? It's a loss. It's a, it's a death. It's a change. You know, even something like, I would imagine if we could consciously experience something like a metamorphosis that a caterpillar goes through, there would be mourning involved in that somehow. So it's the... Mourning is the, let's say, somber experience that follows the loss or death of something precious to you, something important to you. And usually we talk about it in relation to the, the death of a loved one, the natural death of a loved one. And so, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So... Those who are mourning are blessed because they will be comforted, right? The comfort is the blessing that comes to those who are mourning. And perhaps comfort is most meaningful to those who are mourning, right? If everything's going fine in my life and I'm not mourning anything and, and uh, I don't experience the need to be comforted, then when someone attempts to comfort me, um, it's not going to mean much, right? It doesn't mean they're wrong to comfort me. And it doesn't mean it's wrong that I don't really value that comfort that much. It just doesn't mean that much because I'm not mourning. I'm not suffering in a way that that requires or needs or desires comfort. Blessed are the mourning, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Um, so there's something about the comfort, because why doesn't it say, blessed are those who are suffering, for they shall be comforted. Right. Surely that's also true, but in the Beatitude, in the Sermon on the Mount, these words that Jesus deliberately spoke are specifically, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Perhaps it says something about the necessity and even goodness of mourning. Right. Mourning is like a specific kind of suffering, right? Mourning, in order to mourn something, you must have valued it. Right? And if you don't mourn the loss of someone, that means, perhaps, that you didn't mourn them, or that you didn't value them sufficiently. Maybe not necessarily. Okay? But it seems to me that the reason that someone who is mourning would be blessed by, by a comforter comforting them. The reason that they get blessed for that is because mourning is a is the evidence. Mourning is evidence of love. Right? It means that 
you value the person, let's say, that you've lost, such that you feel their loss in their absence. Okay. It doesn't mean that you're not also happy that they're in heaven, let's say. Right? You can be happy, let's say someone was suffering tremendously with a terminal illness for years. And then they die, and there's a relief and even a rejoicing uh, that is reasonable and good even in the wake of that sort of death. But there's also the mourning, right? right? The fact that it's a relief that that person has died is because their quality of life was so bad for so long, and that matters to you because you valued that person. Okay? There's also something about the, 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 those who are mourning being comforted that is healing towards the mourning person. Yes, there is a death of something in your past, right? There's a death of that person who was so valued by you. Um, but there is still goodness, right? You are being comforted. There is still life to value. Both your own life, maybe you're having trouble valuing your own life, but by someone comforting you, whether it's another human being, God directly, God through another human being, okay? That is an indication of uh, value now and hope for the future, right? Because there's a danger in mourning and then refusing comfort because you're stuck in the past, because maybe you're bitter or resentful um, about the fact that you've lost this person, okay? So mourning, yes, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Um, but you have to receive that comfort, right? Whether from God directly or from God through other people or just from your own perception from other people. Okay? You need to receive it, as with any blessing, right? Just like with the, uh, the first beatitude, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, right? Well, you're not, in a sense, in a very real sense, you're not going to have the kingdom of heaven if you refuse it, even if you're in it. Right? If I'm in America, and I hate America, and I refuse all of its... everything about it, then I'm not experiencing the having of America. So just like with the blessing in the first beatitude, the blessing in the second beatitude, they shall be comforted. Uh, you have to receive that comfort. I have to receive that comfort in order to allow this death that I am now mourning to bring about the blessing in my own experience. So that then, right, that will plant a seed in my heart which will grow into some sort of garden, some sort of tree that will bear fruit that others can eat from so that I can be a comforter to others who are mourning. So that I can listen when God is trying to comfort someone through me, I can listen and obey and help comfort someone who, who is mourning, because I've been there. Right? There's a sort of eternal eternity to this to these blessings. Right? They beget one another over and over. They beget themselves. So those are my thoughts right now on the second beatitude as we walk through the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, let me know what you think. Think if I'm way off. Think if you have other ideas. Please comment below. I'm also going to record this in audio form for a podcast and probably write this up uh, in written form for a Substack blog. And I'll probably link those at some point in the description. But thanks for watching. God bless.